Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, I know this is kind of a late upload for this channel. On my other channel, I upload real late, traditionally, but this one, uh, usually not. But um, <laughs> something amazing happened. You look right here, I put out a video, it's seven hours ago, it hasn't even hit 3,000. This is hurting me in my soul. Uh, ouch! <laughs> so I've been talking about how things have been going better on the channel because I've been concentrating more. I was like, I was joking a couple months ago. I, I talked to my friends. It's like, hey, these four videos I shit out, they're not doing very good. It's like, well, you just shit them out. You didn't really give much thought to them. Um, so you see this stuff doing pretty good. 93,000, 26, 15, 13, 20, 15, 21. So I consider failure anything below 10. I set goals. Um, competitive with myself. Um, so uh, <laughs> this is just one of those things. It's like every time I do multiple books in one, and except for when I did compare that those two Captain Marvels, these are never popular. But oh boy, I can't do any more Chip Zdarsky videos because I don't have anything to say. I just like everything he does. So it's like page seven is pretty good. Ooh, page nine is pretty good too. Have you seen page? Yeah, this is, this is literally me just saying everything is good. Uh, but anyway, uh, somebody's been sending me this. And uh, I was like, this will make a good video. <laughs> so I uh, just want to preface this with my standard, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Warning, whatever. Uh, please don't contact this person. Any of the people discussed in this at all, they take anything that's not a compliment or agreement as harassment, and they put harassment uh, on the same level as a physical assault, and they respond accordingly. So I used to do videos like this all the time, just like, ah, this person's a silly but it's more it's got it's it's more about that this person represents a, a type of thought and belief and the industry is now catering to people who i think the average person would say this is pretty unhinged um so this one came out a while ago <laughs> but it's interesting what year it came out because it came out basically the year when everything changed. Uh, we've had three years of comics sales going down. Uh, 2016, 2017, 2018. And then even this year, oh geez, that, that February was just absolutely abysmal. And the problem is that instead of just concentrating on, I did these videos about Rob Liefeld and I said, you know, you can say his, you can say whatever about his style, but when you're a teenager and you're riding your bike to the 7-Eleven, it's the coolest style ever, and that sold millions. For the most, multiple reasons, insane reasons, uh, the comic book industry decided someone like this was the future. Someone so suffused in grievance that they can barely tie their shoes. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Again, I have to say, this is a real person, don't contact them, and this is a real essay. I didn't make this up. This isn't something from the Onion or the Babylon Bee or any of that stuff. So, uh, the white privilege, white audacity, and white priorities of Strange Fruit number one. Uh, so again, this is uh, 2015. This is some book. Can we talk about the audacity of low resolution? What is going on? First of all, that's just just a terrible clip job. It looks like this is called Trange Fruy. Um, Trange Fruy is my favorite um, French New Wave uh, filmmaker. Um, uh, <laughs> this is what the, were they thinking? This is like protect them from like a copyright strike or something like this. So. Um, the Troubling White Privilege of Strange Fruit Number 1 by Mark Wade and J.G. Jones, a new comic from Boom Studios. So, uh... <laughs> oh my gosh. SJWs are an endless source of entertainment. So, it's... Okay, so I, I've, I actually think I read this a couple years ago and then I just skimmed it right now. Um... Sorry, I'm, I'm just noticing all the cringy things. If you look over here on the right, we need to talk about Mantis's abuse in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. They always do this like weird kind of like fake friendly thing. Learn to be a supportive friend with the break. 
<laughs> okay, so what I laugh so hard at is this this manifesto, this screed, this babbling lunacy is in no way, shape, or form a review. But at the beginning, they act like it is. They're like, this review can say contains some spoilers it should say this manifesto contains a lot of lunacy by the way i just have to do a caveat i am not a psychologist psychiatrist psi d mental health care professional or anyone licensed by any government agency to uh, determine mental health of any single person but i have ridden ridden on a lot of subway <laughs> so when you ride the subway you gotta you got to be looking around because no matter how Disney-fied New York City has become, it's still a metal tube underground, sometimes stuck underground, sometimes stuck underground under a river. And these are the people you're with for 15 minutes to possibly several hours because, oh God, native New Yorkers, what's the, what's the little BS thing they do over there? Like when there's something on the tracks, which it can mean literally any single thing or if someone's sick and they have to oh god y'all know what i'm talking about um but you gotta look around and you gotta pick up subtle little cues whether someone is uh, uh gonna be a little crazy and you might need to move to another subway car i would do that all the time especially on a local i do just 34th street station i just step out of one and go right back into the other the, the problem with subway is uh, two of my biggest indicators for someone's a little off they require it, it you spot them better on the outside I'll, I'll just give it to you for if you live in new york city you might know this or if you're moving there uh people walking too fast or too slow compared to the average you know pedestrian the other one is uh overdressed you're wearing three coats in the summertime underdressed you're just wearing a light little windbreaker and it's like negative 10. those are usually great glaring um, uh, indication that something's off and you need to move to a different subway car, but, um, no, 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 <laughs> you just, you get, okay. So we're just going to get into this with the, the, uh, uh, author <laughs> is, uh, writing about strange fruit. Number one has been a long time coming. It has been on my very reluctant radar since it was announced on February 20th, Dwayne McDuffie's birthday. Uh, okay. So get ready to hear about Dwayne McDuffie's birthday. Like it is a national religious holiday. So Dwayne McDuffie, he was a writer, uh, editor, Marvel, DC, and then he went to go work for Warner Brothers Animation. He had a real, you know, good reputation at that time and now, but he has been retroactively made into the Malcolm X Jesus, so, excuse me, Malcolm X slash Black Jesus slash Black Santa of comic books. Um, I, I hate to break it to you, but uh, we all knew he was black in the 80s, and it wasn't an issue. He's a good writer. He's a good editor. He's good at uh, screenwriting. Basically, everyone liked him. Um, so, for, peop for readers who are unaware, Dwayne McDuffie was one of the most prominent black comics writers, and arguably one of the most prominent black activists working within the industry. I don't really remember him being an activist. He just seemed like a regular guy. I don't know. He is one of the few faces that look like mine. What? Okay, so I'm not... Again, please don't contact this person, but you're a woman. So you look like like a six foot three black dude with a beard? I don't, I don't understand this. Oh, okay, representation. Um, and his birthday was the day Boom Studios elected to announce that two white men would be writing and drawing a title about the racist South called Strange Fruit. Sorry. Sorry, Boom Studios did not check their would this bother a crazy person opinion statement uh, uh, calendar. That's sold right, right next to the word a day uh, calendar and then also the far side. Best of the far side calendar. Um, before I go on, I know already that there will be people who would like me to, quote, just stick to the comic, end quote, or maybe even, quote, stay in my lane, end quote, despite the fact that this, if anything, is my entire superhighway. 
After all, I'm promising you a review here. You will never get a review. <laughs> I'm, I'm promising you that she will never give you a review. Um, and I'm talking about the announcement of the comic. What gives? <laughs> I almost did the Hillary. Why am I 50 points behind? Um, you just want to know whether it's good or not. Whether you should buy it, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. However, that's a question in two parts. Is it good is a different question from should I buy it? I'm going to answer both throughout this. But my general thesis is strange fruit number one could literally have been comics's second coming of the Messiah. And I would still think it shouldn't have been made. Oh my God. So this is one of the biggest, biggest, well, I mean, this is several things about SJWs. Number one, SJWs will always turn on you. This book was literally written for this woman. Um, and, uh, SJWs will always turn on you, so this was... <laughs> you made me a cake on my birthday? Grabs cake, shoves it into their face, slams door, Mark Wade and J.G. Jones, very, very confused. Okay, now that I've got that out of the way and people can either rage quit or tweet about my obvious bias in regards to this comic and their creators, uh... Super looking forward to a white person calling me racist, by the way. Okay, so ready? You're racist. Okay. First person who sees it, screen cap and send pics. I can elaborate a little further on whether the work is good and whether you should buy it. When are you going to start pretending to review this book? Oh my gosh. This is one of the freaking Lord of the Rings movies? It's like the Lord of the Grievance Rings. Now, beyond the fact that the comic was announced on a day honoring who is likely the most... Oh, you literally... God. Ah! Ha! Stop! Okay, so... I'll just... Okay, I gotta read it, because it's a setup to some more lunacy. Now, beyond the fact that the comic was announced on a day honoring who is likely the most prominent black comics creator, it is also mentioned both in the initial release and the solicit, that this work is a, quote, deeply personal passion project for creators Mark Wade and J.G. Jones III. To which I have to say, excuse me? That, that I'm not, that, that's actually, just look at the screen, is what she typed. No, seriously, stop a second and look at this. She's making, she's mentioning it's his birthday again. Oh, gosh. This comic... Announced on Dwayne McDuffie's birthday about racism in the South by two white men. Do I need to go into why I have some questions about a why a story about race racism is deeply personal to white people? Not really. I mean, we all get it. You're super racist and a segregationist. I'm, nobody's confused about this. Do I need to explain why I think that the marketing choice was tone deaf and perhaps even towing the line into disrespect? Sorry I made you a birthday cake on your birthday. Sorry about that. Do I need to air my concerns about what indicates what that indicates about who this book is being marketed to and why I suspect it is not people who look like me? Oh my gosh. Marry me? Um the next argument might be that I can't lay this at the feet of the creators because they can't be responsible for the way their PR team has decided to put their work forward. But this is a pretty weak claim considering creator-owned comics tend to mean that the creators approve how and when their work is shown to the public. It gets even weaker when you know that neither Wade nor Jones is new to this game, or even that Wade had a brief stint as editor-in-chief of Boom itself. However, the coup de grace or coup de gras, or coup de gracie, is when you read the quotes from the CBR interview that likely led to that line in the solicit, which I have excerpted here. Oh God, I'm not reading all this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it, 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 every indication is that Jones and Wade, this was a sincere work. They wanted to talk about racism. I don't, I don't see anything to complain about here. So uh, the woman says, uh, I haven't even gotten to the actual content of the comic. Please do get this over with. 
but these two quotes are exemplary of what I am going to be saying about it and why I felt the way I did before I even started reading. The reason why this comic was, amongst other things, a bad idea. This is you put a bad idea all in caps. <laughs> a bad idea. It's because two white men are writing and drawing this book about racism. And they have already decided that it is about them. Okay, so again, this is a, a, a this is this is this is just an opinion. Dear crazy person, it not everything is about you, and not every freaking thing in the GD world is malicious. Sometimes the pipe is still just a pipe. So, with all that in mind, let us talk about the comic proper. Oh God, my... ah, they they always talk like characters in novels. They never talk like people. Starting with the title, for those who don't know. Strange Fruit is the title of a song protesting American racism and particularly the lynching of blacks and was made famous by black singer Billie Holiday in 1939. The lyrics to the song are haunting and speak of this strange fruit that is black bodies that swing in the southern breeze and they are the kind of lyrics that are as a decades long symbol of both protest and mourning dare I say deeply personal. So this is a fairly good description of what strange fruit is the song and what it's about but deeply personal to you does not mean it can't be deeply personal to everyone it can't also just mean it's just a book you read and you go oh i didn't know about that or you find it interesting compelling or emotional you don't get to own things sjws are always trying to control what people can think say believe sell and buy this is a work of art you can buy it or not buy it you can like it or not like it Stop trying to control it. Um, some will be eager to point out that the lyrics of Strange Fruit were originally... <laughs> oh, gosh. So she's basically saying, how could these two white men, white men, white men, and then the song, which she basically says is, you know, beautiful and a protest and deep, is, uh, yeah, it was written by a, a white Jewish guy. Okay, so we get it. You're a racist segregationist. And even things that disprove your theories somehow still prove your theories. Everyone can write about everything. A white person can write about slavery and racism. A black person can write about the Holocaust. I can write about having a good hairline. Anyone can write about anything. They don't have to be the thing that they're writing about. You weirdy. Um, with the knowledge of this song's significance to black Americans, we are once again in territory that is tone deaf at best, disrespectful at worst, and to say the least, audacious, because honestly, how dare you? Okay, then uh, this is another trope of SJW. Shaming. Again, obviously, I got me some issues with Mark Wade, specifically Jawbreaker's issues. But there is nothing that is a how dare you in this. Does this book sound good? No, just some guy reviewed it like six months a year ago. It sounded pretty lame. It sounded like uh, uh, virtue signaling nonsense by a couple of hand-wringing progressive lefty white guys. Um, but it's not, it's not any kind of a how dare you. Um, and even if it was, who cares? Suck it up, buttercup. Um, I am genuinely, genuinely taken aback at the presumptuous it takes to, as a white man, decide that it's probably cool for you to name your comic after a song that has meant so much to a people who have suffered. Hey, sorry, sorry. I, I'm sorry. I am sorry. God, whose side am I on in this lawsuit? I'm sorry that Mark Wade is not a segregationist like you are there, unnamed lady. I got a lot of issues with this dude. But you don't get to say white people can't write about black people or black stories or black themes or any of that stuff. Now, it's probably a good idea to, you know, what's, oh God, why do I always blank on everyone's name? The comedian who always gets arrested all the time and he's short and there's that video of him losing a fight to a high school kid. So he always says, uh, 
get yourself some white friends. And if you're not black and you're writing and you have black people in your story, get yourself some black friends. I have a black friend. I wrote a line for Cuffs where he says, uh, uh, where I had him say, is this because I'm black? And he goes, no, 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 change that. He goes, it wouldn't be said like that. You would say, why are you saying this to me and not everyone else in the room? Um, so, it's, you, yeah, you should not write a book about slavery and lynching of black people and like never talk to a black person, obviously. But the whitest white guy, Mark Wade's pretty close to that, can write about racism, slavery, Holocaust, anything. He can write about anything. Um, okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so she just, okay. Now let us open the comic. Oh, jeez. Thank you. Thank you. Dodge. Okay. So here's some uh, uh, art. I don't really like this Alex Ross, J.G. Jones style. I, I just find it too... It looks like what it is. A bunch of people posing for photographs. You see, there is a long history of stereotyping black men as being physically aggressive and displaying them as intimidating physical forces, often to the level of being superhuman. Okay, but this is like a comic book about a superpowered black-skinned alien who lands in the South. Um, that actually sounds like a lot more interesting than just some guy uh, made it look. Oh, we got a list. We got A and B and A, B. Okay. I was hardly surprised to find that for every white person who says something racist, there is always either A, a white person to tell the other white person that they're wrong, or B, a black person to say nothing and show no resistance. B happens only once, while A happens pretty much throughout the work. So your problem was that not every white person in the story was racist. In order to make white audiences comfortable, white creators of any medium frequently show that, quote, not all whites were pro-slavery or racist. It is simply inconceivable to write a story in which every white person is racist. No, it's not. Kwanzaa does it all the time. <laughs> Kwanzaa does it all the time. Uh, because in their minds, how could that possibly be true? You set the clan up, the obvious racists, just to knock them down with white saviors, to remind readers, audiences, that whites are still good people. We all know better than that. And knew better and wanted to help. Wow, you are very racist. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. I was also similar, similarly unsurprised to find that strange fruit number one fails the black Bechdel test. That's not a real thing. So the Bechdel test is uh, in a, uh, a story with two women. They have to, I, it, correct me if I'm wrong, that when they're talking to each other, they can't be talking about a man. It's a, it's a test that doesn't prove, the only thing the Bechdel test proves is whether you passed it or not. There's, it's no litmus test for equality or art or anything. It's just something that exists. It's like, do you have my glove? Oh yeah, I found it when you dropped it. Oh, you just passed the do you have my glove test. It's, it's meaningless. Yes, there is more than one black person in it. However, none of them speak to each other until the very last scene. And naturally, okay, I don't believe that. And naturally, in that very last scene where the two black men are finally having a conversation, or where one is talking at the other, they have a conversation about white people. Because, let's all be real here for a second. Um, one thing is consistent about the way this comic has been marketed, titled, drawn, and written. It is all about white people, and nothing makes that clearer than the last page. So I guess this is the last page to be continued. Um, so uh, the guy in the background says, oh yeah, them white folks really ain't gonna like that. I'm guessing they're not gonna like that he's wearing a confederate flag as a dress, kilt, something. After the alien, oh, so, no, I, uh, after the alien runs off the Klansman, Sonny, the human black man, notes that 
White people aren't going to like it very much if the alien runs around naked. He looks for something to cover up the alien and finds the Confederate flag. Now that's subtle. Um, the last page shows our superhuman black alien in a heroic pose with the Confederate flag wrapped around his waist. As Sonny says, them white folks really ain't going to like that. I am dead serious. And I am furious. Okay. Wade, Jones, and Boom Editorial decided that it was just fine to pose a strong, heroic black man with a Confederate flag for clothing as dressed by another black man. Really? Okay, so this is not very subtle, but obviously they're trying to do a thing with juxtaposition. Isn't it ironic that he's dressed himself in the Confederate flag, but this guy's Superman, so he doesn't really care. It's just a piece of cloth to them, and he's going to go whoop some ass. Like, not very subtle, kind of dumb and dopey, but okay. And you want to know why? Because Wade and Jones spent a lot of time considering what white folks are and aren't going to like without once stopping to think about what black folks really ain't going to like. So, first of all, I have bad news <laughs> for this woman. Black people all don't like the same thing. <laughs> I know that's shocking. I know it's shocking. This is why this comic never should have been made. This is book burning. This is pre-book burning. This is the idea that you get to decide what books should exist and what books should not. Um, uh, it's what looks to be a really, really lame mix of sincere belief and virtue signaling. Um, you don't get to decide what books are made and not made. You get to decide if you buy it, if you like it, if you recommend it, if you boycott it, all those things. But stop burning books figuratively and literally. She goes, not because there were missteps, not because Wade and Jones didn't mean well. Okay, so you're admitting that they probably did mean well in a hand-wringing, cheeseball, lefty, guilty, white guy way. And not because white people should never write about black people at all. I mean, you pretty much did say that. This comic should never have been made because there is too long history of white people writing stories about racism and blackness. Too long a history of white people shaping these tales to their own purposes. Too long a history of white people writing about what they genuinely cannot understand. And all and above all, too long a history of white people, particularly men, being able to do this. Oh, so you, you do admit that you want to be able to control what people are able to do. Okay. Not even a perfect 11 out of 10 comic would have justified the continued erasure of black voices. Oh my gosh. I'm not even going to tell you to take a seat. I'm going to tell you to take a stadium. There is no erasure clap warning of black audiences. Black voices. You are free to write this ridiculous lunatic manifesto and a hundred more. But you don't get to tell people what they can write. And Mark Wade and writing some cheeseball story does not mean black people can't write anything else that they want to write all the time. If these gentlemen were so committed to telling a story about anti-black racism, then they should have brought a black writer or black artist onto the team. They would have made black voices telling black stories a priority. Okay, so, okay, so let's just say it straight up if it would have been a black artist you would have said that the black artist was being subsumed to the white voice of the white writer if mark wade would have brought on a black co-writer you would have you would have said he should have stepped down and now it's completely different work with just the same title if these gentlemen were so committed to handling this respectfully and responsibly, then they would have decided not to co-opt the title that is clearly a part of the black struggle, and it was created by a Jewish guy, and is already being used by a black comics creator for a separate project that explores black history. Well, that's a copyright trademark issue. And if Boom Studios really intends on pushing comics forward, I have a number of questions about how this project continues that initiative when it is just yet another example of white men writing about a marginalized people's struggle. So your first question is, 
Is this comic good? Not particularly, no matter which way you look at it. The art is the best feature, but it doesn't make up for unoriginal storytelling or any of the things I've listed above. That's pretty much what just some guy said as well. And your second question, should I buy it? That's ultimately up to you. But know this, they're so lecturing. Giving money to this project and contributing to a success, that never happened, <laughs> signifies to the industry and your peers, oh, this is some more peer group shaming, that you are absolutely fine with oppressors. What? Continue. Lady, shut the hell up. You are a bone deep racist and segregationist and you need to take every stadium in the National Football League. In my view, the stakes are much too high for that. For too long have white people defined what my pain is. Uh, no, 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 no. Chemical imbalances have defined what your pain is. How it should be displayed and what stories involving it should look like. And for too long has the end result of that been the dehumanizing and devaluing of faces like mine. And this is a woman who apparently looks exactly like Dwayne McDuffie. Because whatever Wade or Jones would like to think strange fruit means, all I see is blood on the leaves. That's dramatic. So anyway, just want to preface this again. Please don't contact anyone in the video I mentioned. Don't write at them. Just ignore it. This is not, even though I roasted this person in their eccentricities, let us say, um, it's not about this a person. It's about an industry who decided to cater to this type of lunacy, miserable grievance farming. Were there any good points in this? Eh, not really. Everyone can write about everything. Obviously, if you're writing about something you haven't experienced, I get people all the time, hey, uh, I was in the military, I'm writing a military story. Can I hit you up for questions? And then I say, sure. And then they ask me like 50 questions and I go, huh, I thought you were gonna ask me if a lieutenant outranks a captain. I didn't realize you were gonna <laughs> ask me to Right, like five essays, but you should definitely research things. But that doesn't mean, uh, you know, a civilian can't write about war. It doesn't mean I can't write about Vietnam because I wasn't fighting it. Anyone can write about anything. And nobody gets to decide what books are made, what books are read, what books are sold. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo, and I'll have, I'll have that Detective Comics 1000 probably around lunchtime tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.